Good morning. I'm Jamie Parrish with the Wiser Theory Chamber of Commerce. And this morning we are welcoming Rachel Rexroad. And Rachel has a business called Learn CPR. Um, we're finding all about Rachel today. And before we do get started about Rachel, I uh, just wanted to throw it in there that um, she has a wonderful husband, Jeremy Rexroad, and he has Rexroad Insurance right at the corner of Height and Boyer. So anyways, good morning, Rachel. Good morning. Thank you, Janie. Sure. Okay, so I'm going to be quiet, which is always a feat for me. Um, and if you could tell us all about Learn CPR. Yeah, um, so Learn CPR, as the name implies, is a CPR training company. Um, I founded this in 2019, so right before the pandemic, so that was quite interesting. Um, but I'm also a professional firefighter and paramedic, and so out of all of the things that I see, um, the lack of CPR education in the lack of CPR doing being done on patients was definitely a need that I saw that needed to be filled. And so I founded a company. Very cool. So tell us about um, what's unique about Learn CPR and um, it, just everything about it, because I have heard you speak before at Lions Club and it, it's amazing. Yeah, so actually we do a lot. Um, I know the name says learn CPR and so obviously that's our main focus, but CPR could be any type of training. It could just be a simple awareness training or it could be a certified level. So for example, uh, I had a mom come in on Saturday. She has a brand new three month old and she just wanted to know how to do infant CPR and what happens if he were to choke. And so like, she doesn't need a certification. She just wants to know what to do. So absolutely let's go over those things and then the next step is for people who do need certified training um, whether they're a child care provider teacher coach anything like that and then we have the highest level which is for medical professionals and so that could be anything from nurses doctors paramedics dentists so those are the cpr levels that we do but we also do uh like it's called stop the bleed. So it's life-threatening bleeding emergencies. So the person is still alive, but something is happening. How do you mitigate those situations? So how to use a tourniquet, how to stop the bleed, hence the name, it's kind of where I got it from um, because it's obvious, right? And so those are the training classes that we do for all types of people, all groups of businesses. Um, but what you were, what you were referring to at the Lions Club, we're also doing a AED project, meaning I want to bring more awareness to Wadsworth about AED. So one, where are they located? And can we increase the amount where they are at, but then also their accessibility. So that's a big issue. Are they behind a locked door? Are they in an area where people don't know where to find them? And so actually I just got my demo unit. Um, there she is, she's so pretty. <laughs> And so, yeah, we're going to be showing that lady off uh, pretty soon um, because it's really cool. We really need to know where our AEDs are at and have the availability for them. So uh, over 393,000 people a year will die of cardiac arrest. 70% of these people will die at home. And so we need to have accessibility to these AEDs because the fire department is at best four minutes away. We need to know what to do during those four minutes. And a lot of people think, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm just a lay person. Like I, I'm just the mom or I, I'm just the wife. No, you're, you're doing what I would do as a paramedic in those first few minutes. Sure, I have all the equipment in the ambulance and, and I can, you know, do advanced things. But in those first few minutes, you're doing what I'm doing. And so it's really important that we increase the, the awareness and the education for CPR, but also AEDs. And Rachel, why do you love what you do? Because I know you do. Oh, I do. Yeah, yeah, I totally do. Um, so first off, we're talking about something that's really heavy, right? We're talking about people dying and like seeing that. And, and I get that. I really do. Like, I know that this is a pretty serious and heavy topic. However, we don't 
need to be so serious in training. And so I have found a really good way to take this really heavy, serious topic and make it fun. And we do music and I unfortunately dance. It's not pretty at all, but I mean, it's really fun and people are, they enjoy it, right? Um, I also really enjoy seeing groups come together. So when I work in businesses or when I work with groups who work together, um, they start off doing individual skills and then I teach them how to work together because this is where the magic happens. Um, this is where synergy happens. This is where I see the teams work together in bonding and I see the wheels start turning and I see them like start high-fiving each other. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing to see because this is what we want. One person can't see, can't save somebody alone. Like you have to have partners to help you. And so when, um, when we go through the training and I see people start working together in the synergy that's built, it's pretty cool. Uh, I recently was at a, uh, at a home. The mom and dad wanted their 12 year olds to learn CPR. Their daughter wants to start babysitting in the summer. So they thought this was appropriate. Their son does a lot of sports and he hunts and he's outside all of the time. So they're like, yeah, he should probably know this too. They were a little concerned because these 12 year olds are the shy ones in their family. So they weren't sure if they would engage, if I'd have to like pull it out of them. Um, they weren't sure how they would respond. By the end of the class, their most shy child was like super confident and he was empowered and he was like telling me what to do and being like very direct. And the mom was like, I've never seen him like this. Like, I was so impressed to see how confident he was at the end of the class. And so that's pretty cool, right? I get to see adults do this, but then I also get to see these teenagers. Like, they just blossom at the end of the class. It, it's pretty amazing to see. Now, Rachel, how can we find you and learn CPR? Uh, so we're going through a, a lot of new business growing pains right now, meaning our website is under construction. So we're doing a lot of those things. But as of right now, you can reach me via email. So CPR with Rex Road at gmail.com. Pretty simple email, um, but also on Facebook, just at Learn CPR. OK, now, will you go into businesses and um, and teach a group? Yeah, so I actually, we're a mobile business and I prefer to be mobile uh, rather than have people come to me. And the reason why is because your business, your location has very specific logistics that we need to talk about. And so depending on, is it a certain doorway, right? Like are EMS going to be able to come through that door? Do they need to come through a different entrance? Um, if you have first aid equipment, if you have an AED on site, we will go over your equipment because it's important for you to know what is available for you. Also during that like team oriented aspect of our training, we talk about those logistics because I can start seeing like the wheels are turning. People are like, hmm, interesting. So um usually our front door is locked or usually the back door is locked. And so like they just start talking about things that need to be addressed before an emergency happens. And so that's kind of cool because I just step back and I'm like, good job, guys. All right. This is what we want, you know? Yeah. And so that I prefer to do that because this is what's going to happen. It's not if you're going to have an emergency at your workplace or if you're going to have an emergency at home. It's when I hate to be pessimistic like that, but it's just reality. And so being able to address the logistics of your business place or your home is really important to talk about. Well, this is absolutely amazing. And Rachel, we can't even thank you enough for what you're doing to help. And I'm thinking about that mom with the um, three month old, how wonderful that she had a place that she could go, but to realize that there, there's a possibility of a choking incident and knowing what to do. So thank you for all that you yeah, do. Absolutely. Rachel Rex wrote Ed. And I, I wanted mm -hmm. to tell you that um, when you said about I don't want to be pessimistic, there's nobody on planet Earth that would be more <laughs> pessimistic, Rachel. Yeah, yeah that, that's what my husband says too. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Well, thank yeah. you ever so much for all you do talking with us today and your educational piece. We appreciate you.
Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.